girls just want to communicate. Yes. But guys are so different in front of their friends and in front of you. They're so different. It's like, so oh, adorable, isn't it? It's like it? two different people. You are right. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Seizo! It's Azura. And I'm Jermaine. And welcome back to Clarity's Hash Podcast. Have you ever heard the saying, men are from Mars, women are from Venus? Of course. Yes. Where are you guys from? Singapore. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, my friends are very different. <laughs> Today, we actually wanted to talk a little bit about making the first move as a woman. Okay, oh. mm. this can be in anything, right? But mostly in dating. I don't know about you guys, but have you girls ever made the first move? Like you're the one to initiate something with a guy. In recent years, yes. I like to do it. Really? Oh, yeah. How? Oh. I said, what, what do you what do? What do you mean, What's how? your play? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like to make the first move. I like to ask the guy out first. I like <gasps> to initiate how? different how? things. Like, what do you say? Play smooth lah. Uh-huh. Play cool. Like how, example? And then, would you want to hang? I mean, something as easy and simple as that. That sounds just innocent. Oh yeah, I'm right? just kind of. Yeah, the innocent, innocent kind of. <laughs> yeah, not the ow. Oh. Yeah. Raw. But you would make that first move even if they haven't asked you. Yeah. Oh. I don't see anything wrong with that. So like, for example, okay, us out already, right? Uh-huh. When it comes to more serious conversations, for example, would you make the first move? Of course. When it comes to maybe hugs, Things more than that. Physical intimacy. Uh. I don't mind making the first move as Have well. Have you? What do you mean? Like, initiate Have to hold hands? I love you first. Oh, okay. Um, This one, mm, nope. <laughs> okay, okay. No. Have you said, well, I think I like you? Yeah, for sure. Oh. Hey, I... I love you are uh, three words that carry a lot of weight, okay? I said it I love you first. It can't be easily yeah. said. I would never ask a guy out first, but okay. I said I love you first. Oh, wow. Really? In fact, it's a stretch. What I said was, I think... I, I might you. love you, yeah. I think I might love you. Yeah. I was also a bit drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day, I was like, did I say that to you? Hey, hey, hey. Did we have a very important conversation last I'm night? I'm a firm believer <laughs> that of drunk words and actions are sober thoughts. Fair enough. It's not 100% yeah. accurate, but, but I would say there's 70% truth. I would never, though, ask a guy out on a date or to hang because I wouldn't want to seem over eager. Do you know what I mean? Oh. I don't want to seem like I'm coming on too strong as a girl. No, but I think that it also is a display of affection, right? Yeah. It shows the guy that, hey, you know, you're interested. Then maybe next time he can make the first move or ask you out on a second date. Right? I mean, it's like a it's like a ping pong session, honestly. For like, me, it was like, if he wanted to, he would. Mm. Then you want to wait until how long? Sometimes, right? You have to keep waiting and waiting. Then why not just save yourself the trouble? Because when you wait, you actually think about, oh, when is he going to ask me out? Is he ever going to? Is then he might interested? As well, yeah, you just make the first move. Ask the question. I feel like that two camps sure uh-huh. there's one camp that have you heard of guys say like they find it hot when women make the first move like they like it when women in make the first move oh, no, no 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 like- on the streets <laughs> Like just initiate. Oh, they find things. it sexy and confident. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. But then there's also another cam that believes that men inherently are supposed to be chasers to lead to yes direct correct. They're the ones with the masculine energy, right? Oh. They are chasers. They're go getters, and you need to allow them to be that. I am more of that. The second cam. Like you feel like men should be more proactive. No, but then again, the way that you act will attract the men that are in. Whichever camp. There are, exactly. There's someone for everyone. Mm-hmm. Right? There is. Yeah. Sometimes, unknowingly, you project stuff and that's why you attract whatever pattern that you're attracting. Mm. But the problem is, I've heard when I was single, not now, in the short stint that I was single, nobody really dared to ask me out. I think I come off as intimidating to people. So no one really dared to ask me out. There was only really like one guy that dared to ask me out. For coffee? Yes, for coffee. And this was a guy that like I met in the club, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously. And you would think, okay, just let's lay it out here. If you're trying to get someone in bed, you will ask them, do you want to go for a drink? Right. Do you mm-hmm. want to go for dinner and then drinks? Mm-hmm. But he asked me out. He said, I want to go for coffee in the day. Ooh, wow. I was like, I was like, whoa, I was a bit taken aback. Mm-hmm. The timing was not right. Mm-hmm. At this time, my heart was already with someone else oh. yeah so it didn't pan out I didn't go for the coffee mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying I think I would prefer a guy ask me out because then I can analyse what are your intentions if you ask me for a drink what do you want okay mm. but if you ask me for a coffee then maybe you just want to stay with friends I have such a good impression no if you ask me out for a coffee I don't think guys will have coffee just with a girl for any reason like would you? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. you wouldn't just ask for a coffee I'm like there. let's be friends you know uh-huh. it's 
like a okay. sign that you wanted to lead somewhere. But maybe he wanted to show you that he was a gentleman and not ask you out for like. dinner and drinks on the first day, I right? Like. Sorry. What? Have you seen videos? Tons of them I've seen <laughs> where girls are saying if he asks you out for coffee, uh -huh. don't do it. <gasps> because you're setting precedence that, oh, you can be casual, like cheap with me. Don't like you want to take me out, take me out for dinner. Have you seen those videos? No. no. And I don't believe in that. Coffee is expensive these days. I mean, coffee not like kopi tiam, right? If you bring me to go eat, like drink like kopi o. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because if you want to date or if you're interested in getting to know me if there's an intention there maybe they want it to be more intentional okay. hey i'm a cafe date over a dinner date kind of girl man it? yeah. it's casual it's not so serious not so much pressure it's chill it's fun right, right? yeah but it's okay simple. asking someone out on a date is one thing right i think we're quite divided on that i think mm -hmm. that's fine mm. but then when it comes to chivalry right paying on the first date Ooh. we've talked about this it's very different than asking out on a first date even if it's just coffee Paying on a first date, does it always have to be the guy? Okay, I can definitely pay for my own coffee, but it would be nice if you offered to pay on the first date. It's gentleman. Yeah, and on the second date, then I'll treat you lah. If there is one. Right, if there is one. If there is one. If I know that there's going to be no second date, then I might offer to pay for the first one. Mm. Oh. You know what? Because I don't okay. owe you anything, like we're just friends. Mm. Ezra, don't come at us. Oh. We're all for... <laughs> Equality and everything, correct, right? Correct, correct, correct. And sure. it's not that we're double standard to whatever it is. But again, I'd like to go back to... I think the feminine and masculine energy thing is very real. And I think it's very inbuilt in people. You can't change that. Hence, that's why it tells us something when you offer to pay on the first date. Mm. It's true. And this actually comes from years and years. I'm pretty sure, okay, in the 18th century somewhere, right? Mm. Uh, an English man would send a pigeon with a love letter. What would his name be? Edward. Edward. Edward, Edward would right. send a pigeon. Send the pigeon. Yeah, with yeah. love letter. My dear Juliet. Okay. Yeah, you know, <laughs> would you care to come on a date with me, you know? Yes. Like, that's the standards that mm. we, you know, were ingrained in us. It's, My it's, carriage shall be waiting for you at 8pm. Yeah, now it's, you want to take grab? Or, no. uh, <laughs> I, I mean, you're in the, at the train station. Last cabin. So this is like, in history, it's always been very patriarchal. It's mm -hmm. always been like, the man has to court the woman. Like, have you guys seen Bridgerton? Yes. Bridgerton. Yeah. Bridgerton. You have to court the woman, mm -hmm. you know? You have to like, present yourself and all that. So it comes from there, right? Mm. Yes. Our PD actually said, when Ooh. it comes to casual dating, mm. I always make the first move. Our PD okay. is a girl. But that's because I want to make sure the date aligns with my schedule and I don't like surprises. So I will plan ahead and also I will plan the escape route if Ooh. I need it. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god, it's like the, you call your girlfriend and uh, you're like, level 10 emergency. Yeah. Then? Then the friend is like, okay, I'll call crying, put me on speaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's our PD making the first move. Hey, but the escape plan is very real. What does dating mean? As in you're not very interested? Which PD is you this? Oh! oh! I see. Interesting. <laughs> Do you think it's irritating when guys say like, oh, let's hang. Would you rather them say, I want to take you out? But then it becomes more serious if they say, I want to take you out, right? Let's hang. I think it leaves more space for escape plans, like you mentioned. Just yeah, now, right? escape plans. But it's very like modern dating that makes like, you know, chivalry dead. How would you get out of a date that you didn't want to be in? No, I would get through it and then mm. never see him again. You would stay till the end? Yeah. What if it like so closes you, bail? you out? Bail on a date? Uh. Halfway? Disappear? Bro, I have barely been on dates. Oh, yeah lah. <laughs> How to bail on the date? I would probably just go to the toilet and never come back. Huh, and leave him hanging. Yeah, but I I'll mean, pay for the bill. But then I'll never come back. <laughs> but it's, it's respect for me. Like, mm. you know, I wouldn't mm. want my date to do this or so. Aww. At least tell me and then like, okay, sure, we can end it there. We can just go home oh, on our true. separate ways. That's true. Shall we do a quick little experiment? Sure. Okay. You think we should call some guys right now and find out whether they think, which oh. cam is it? Sure. Do they think it's hot that a girl... Ask them out first, or would they rather be the one to let me call Avery? I knew it. Let's hear. I it. don't know what he's doing. He's probably at the gym or boxing, or let's find out. Hi. Yes. What are you doing? I'm at home. Can I ask you something? Mm. We're filming Hush Podcast now. Mm -hmm. Say hi. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Do you think it's hot when a girl asks you out on a first date or makes the first move? Yeah, of course. Why? Because it kind of breaks 
folks like that whole stigma of guys having to be the ones to always be the ones to ask first and I think it takes a lot of courage for girls to have that kind of confidence to ask you all. Do you not feel like it's in a guy to want to chase or to be the hunters for that matter? To court? I mean, I think that is also a cultural thing that it's become so like ingrained enough that guys are supposed to be the ones to do it but I do believe that when a girl does it is I wouldn't say like a massive turn on but like, like guys would be like oh you know she actually took the courage to ask me out hmm. so yeah I think it is attractive that's so interesting oh, any other burning questions no for... that's all thank you thanks okay, thanks <laughs> love you bye <laughs> We've heard from mm -hmm. one guy. Interesting. Huh. huh. Mm. It does take a lot of courage. I used to think that girls shouldn't make the first move until one girlfriend told me that I only date guys I go after. Oh. And huh? I, I thought that like that shed some clarity on me because oh. she knows what are the type of guys that she likes. Yeah. And she can't expect like this type of guys to always come after her. So it's okay. Then I make the first move. Oh. So that's where she's coming from. What's the success rate? Uh, I haven't been in touch with her in recent times. So mm. she told me this back when we were still studying together. Mm. So I don't know what it's like. I mean, that is when we, you know, try to take the lead in dating. I think it's nice to hear from a guy. It's nice to hear that, you know, it can be quite sexy. You know, it can be quite attractive to actually make the first move. Mm -hmm. When it comes to our careers though, it's so different. It's right? even more so for me. Here's what I heard from a lot of guys is that guys are revered for their societal status, for their financial gain. Women, traditionally, I'm not saying we're not revered for anything else, but I'm saying historically, women are revered for their physical appearance. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so much so that guys, you know, are very aggressive in their careers. Mm -hmm. But women who are very aggressive in their careers sometimes find it hard to settle down. What do you girls think? I think when it comes to my career, it's even more so for me, in the sense that I'm even more proactive then when it comes to my dating life, okay. I will always want to take the first move, mm. take the first step, make projects happen for me because this is my career. It concerns me mm. and nobody else. Yes, while I do agree with Jeremy that, you know, traditionally, men is a typical like breadwinner. Women are known for their looks. But I think things are changing now, especially in Singapore. Where women, we have more of a say. We have gentle voices, louder discussions. Uh. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's changing. And I like this change. But do you think that compared to your male counterparts... Right, in the same job, same roles. Do you feel like you have to work harder or do you feel that you're treated differently? No, nope, not at oh. all. At least in my company, in where I work at, we are all treated very equally. And in fact, I feel like sometimes women, we have an additional advantage over edge, men. Yeah, it? an okay. extra edge over men. Don't you feel so? Maybe it's because we are in this industry, the media industry, and sometimes we have to doll up and stuff like that. We get to try different styles. We get to represent ourselves in many more ways than men can. I think we're very fortunate because I also feel like I haven't felt that difference in the workplace. Right. Yeah. Mm, no such discrimination, I feel. Mm. Probably, Good job, media yeah, Not so much in our workplace. In Correct. The media industry. So was there a moment when you girls felt the urge to make a strong career decision despite your fears? Okay, for me, it was back when I was 22. Mm. 2016 at the time, I joined the radio competition. Mm. Honestly, I never knew where it was going to bring me. I don't even know like if the amount of money I was going to make every month is going to help me. Can I save? Will I be able to grow some savings and give my parents money? Stuff like that. But I still went ahead because I felt like, you know, women, we should chase after our dreams. Mm. Not just women, men as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's never been about, you know, gender for me. It's always been about myself, like Correct. what, what yeah. Hazy said, right? It's building a career for yourself. I don't think most Singaporean women have like the sense of, oh, you know, I, I don't want to be too career focused because it's not sexy. You know, I want to just focus on being a domesticated goddess. You know, I learned how mm. to cook and plant a garden, things like that. Right? I don't think we have that mindset. Right. But yeah. some people still do. Correct. Yeah. I've known of people, right, that if given a choice between going to try and succeed in your own career mm. or choosing to have kids and be a trophy wife, they will choose to have kids and be a trophy wife. But nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong with nothing that. Nothing at just all. For us. You yeah. just want that extra time with your children, which we totally respect, right? 100%. Okay. Here's something that I've heard. And it really made me feel like, wow, you know, maybe... It's so great and we're so fortunate that we're in a time like this. So basically, I was walking out of a relationship. I had spoken to a family member of the other party. Okay. She looks at me. She says, I understand what you mean mm. because this person that I'm married to is the same. But I'm not like you. I'm dependent on him. In it what ways? Monetarily. Oh. 
just, you know, take it back 30 years ago where the woman is a homemaker dependent on her husband. Mm. And when she said that, it hit me that some people back then did not have the option of an out when they were unhappy. Mm. And we have that option of an out because we, first of all, are brave enough to make these decisions for ourselves. And secondly, because we can provide for ourselves financially. Imagine being in that position where you want an out, but you've been reliant on another person. You don't have one because traditionally at that time, mm. the man was the breadwinner of the mm. family, right? The women never got the chance to go and make a career from mm. themselves. And what are you going to do at that age? Mm. Like, it's easier to just stay in that situation Correct. than to leave and try and, you know, make a life for yourself again. It's it, Sometimes it's too late at that stage. I mean, I don't think any of us here think men should be the sole breadwinner of the family. No, yeah. not at all. Yeah. Most families can't even survive on a single income mm -hmm. because the cost of living in Singapore is too high. Mm -hmm. So I think that has really shaped a lot of women's mindsets into thinking it has to be a double income household. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even with kids, a family, it doesn't matter. Mm. But isn't it great to, what do you call it, bake your own bread, make your own money? Oh, like absolutely. You are able to provide for yourself without being dependent on the amount of money that your husband is going to give you every month. I think it's a very empowering feeling. Definitely. And I think something that haunts me or something that I'll never be able to do is to ask someone for permission when I want to spend money. Correct. Yes. Or when I want to buy something because that money is not mine. It drives me insane like that thought of it sorry I don't know how to do it I understand mm. yeah I think it is very empowering to have mm. your own money I think for me it was a bit a twisted situation for many years I wouldn't say a breadwinner I don't have a family right but mm. I was the more financially capable one mm. for many years and I still am but now I'm understanding a bit more of the feminine side of it of mm. like taking a back seat letting someone else plan the date, letting mm -hmm. someone else plan the holiday, letting mm -hmm. someone else buy you a gift for once, mm. right? Like, it used to be always me. Like, if it was my birthday, I would buy myself a cake. I'll plan it. And then this year, my boyfriend actually said to me, no, I'm gonna, you know, I'll arrange everything. Like, I'll plan everything out. Aww. It's just nice to be taken care of sometimes. I, I never had that, you know, mm. in this way for many years. So, it's just nice to have, be a soft feminine uh, mm. girl for once. <laughs> She's not in so her masculine. soft girl era. Yeah, not so masculine. But yeah, I do think that, especially in a world workplace right with women and men it's very different when you come out as assertive like when you assert like i want this right or you're in a meeting and you say i really really believe in this i strongly believe in this i think a lot of times women are seen as emotional creatures mm. men are seen as logical creatures mm. it makes things very complicated in the workplace they would just think ah, she's just pmsing so do you guys feel that because women are seen as emotional creatures right you try to be less emotional so that you're taken more seriously. Yes. At work. No. Oh. I feel like this is interesting because especially in our industry, it helps that we're emotional. Mm -hmm. No, seriously. I feel like emotions help us become creative. Oh, yes, it's true. Right? But if let's say I'm feeling something and I'm trying to get a point across, I do have that thought that, oh, I don't want someone to be able to say that she's acting based on emotions or she's just being emotional. She's just saying that because she's being emotional. So I give myself the time to write those feelings out first and then it feels like a, I need to be logical. Oh I my need gosh. to make sure whatever I say yeah. is going to sound like it's coming from logic and not emotions. I'm the same way. Mm. I literally like, before I go into any big conversation, mm. I have to take check of my emotions first. Yeah. I write down all the logical points that I want to hit mm. and I memorize them. Just Whoa. because I don't want to... When I get emotional, it does affect the quality of the point I'm trying to put across. Yeah. I've also heard people like feel the need to say, oh, my female boss. You don't say your oh. male boss. That's true. Oh, You've heard that, right? Yeah. You've heard people say like, oh, I've got a female boss. It's like implying something, you know? I have female bosses. I love them. Mm. Oh, yes. Yes, I hope actually, they're watching this. Most of our bosses are all females. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In an entertainment industry, we have a lot of female colleagues, mm. bosses. It's very natural. I find that female bosses are a lot more empathetic. Mm -mm. Mm. I like a female boss. Mm. Mm. But here's the thing, right? I feel like at the workplace, when it's a work setting, maybe it's just me, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe women feel braver to be bolder at work, to make first moves at work because there's less to lose. You know what I mean? Why? It's, it's a workplace. I ask for it. If I get, I get. I don't, I don't. I'm happy I say it. If I'm in a position where I'm leading people, where I'm leading a team, for example, I set the rules, I set the boundaries, mm. I lead, right, basically. But I think maybe women get a little bit more afraid when it's like matters of the heart. When 
your heart is on the line, mm. you're a bit more afraid to put it out there. It's because it's emotional. But at the workplace, mm. your heart is not exactly on the line. You know, whether people think you're a bitch or not. And sometimes we don't really care. Like, you think I'm a bitch, you think I'm a bitch. Like, you know, work is getting done. Mm. So, maybe because of that, they're a little bit braver to make first moves at work. As a society, right, I think we can kind of watch a bit more of the vocabulary that we use in the mm. workplace to describe women and men. Like, mm. for example, if a woman or a man, you know, says something very controversial during a meeting, people would describe the woman as, oh, she's so bossy, you know, mm. she's so, like, naggy. But they would describe the man as, oh, maybe, you know, he, he's coming on, like, you know, strong. It's a strong point. Mm. Like, the vocabulary and the words that you use, the language also does perpetuate these stereotypes again and again. Correct. Yeah. But you know what? Of recent times, I think there's a tool that really, really helped women feel more powerful. Oh. Mm. And that's social media. Mm. Don't you think? We have had guests on a Hush podcast before. Rachel? from Love Bonito. Yeah. Naomi Neal, OG blogger. I do feel like they have made such strong impacts via social media. This, in turn, makes them more confident and feel better about themselves. So that's what I'm saying. There's a community out there that is for you. No matter what kind of lives you're leading at home or in the office. We just have to shed that old idea of like feminine means you have to be more passive, Mm. more submissive. Mm. I think the roles of feminine and masculine, not just in terms of personality, but in terms of like dressing, in terms of all that, you know, Mm. I love it when a guy has nail polish on. Yeah. I think it's like, I think it's cute. Yeah. Mm. And these are like straight men. They're not even, you know, Mm. bi or gay or anything. Mm. But I love it. Mm. Yeah. When they bend stereotypes. Stereotypes are meant to be broken. Mm. I fully agree. Yeah. Just like rules. <laughs> no. Not no? the law. Oh, no, not the law. Rules. Okay. Rules. Mm. Okay. I actually have a friend many, many years ago, and I would say, wow, this is more than 10 years ago. She proposed to her husband. Oh. Oh, what? Yes. She got down on one knee. She did. Wow. They were on a road trip. He was driving. She pulled out a ring <gasps> and said, Marry me. Oh. oh. And it's like 10 years ago. Nice. I mean, as much as I enjoy listening to such stories, I think it's hard to picture myself in this situation. Mm. Like, I would still want my other half to propose to me. You still want your fairy tale. Yeah. You know, it's just going to happen once in a lifetime. So I just want to enjoy it. So in a sense, sense, we're still a bit traditional in some ways. Yeah, I I think so. I feel like I'm very proactive when it comes to work. Mm. I've been so independent when it comes to my career that Mm. I don't want to be independent when it comes to my relationship anymore. I just want someone to rely on. Of course, I don't mind, you know, paying for meals. Mm. I mean, we should take turns what is only right. I don't mind asking him out on dates and stuff Mm. like that. Planning stuff. I think it's great. But when it comes to the bigger events of our lives, I feel like it would be nice if he takes the lead. Have you also heard about people say like women who have careers and hold powerful positions at work, they tend to want to take a back seat at home because they've spent the entire day taking care of everything. They just want to be taken Take care, care of. of. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like if this is unfair to the men because they have also had a hard day at work, right? Everyone deserves to be taken care Correct. of. Correct. To be treated like a baby sometimes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's a two-way street. It's a human thing at the end of the day, right? I think femininity has evolved so much, right? It used to be like, oh, if you're submissive or passive, that's feminine. Mm. Now it's like confidence is yeah. femininity. So how do you guys express your feminine sides? How about we address this question for each other? Oh. Okay, I feel like for Zura. Well, I've struggled, but carry on. I think the struggle is past you. Oh. I think for you, so you is- display your confidence with your dressing, your I fashion. Agree. I was going to say this. Right. Her style. Your hair. Like you break conventional norms. With My hair also breaks, by the way, every day. <laughs> <laughs> She break the norms and her hair also <laughs> splits apart. Okay, so that's for Zura. Okay, now, for Jimmy. Oh. It's not very feminine, is it? No, no you I are very... Like she's confidence in oh, herself. Like, yeah. she is just confidence in one package. But we're all confident. You guys are confident too. It shines through. No, I think something that I really admire about you is that you can let go and you can allow someone to take the front seat, the driver's seat. Oh. It's very hard for some people. To, I mean, I struggled with that for a long time. So I would see it, right? And I was like, actually, why cannot? Mm. You know what I mean? I think it takes the right situation mm. and or the right person to bring that out of you. Oh. You know what She's I mean? She's also right. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Hazy. Okay, mm. come. But Hazy is the epitome of femininity, you know? Really? Of, yeah. Yes. 
As in, you're masculine when it comes to like, when you take care of yourself. You're very masculine in that sense, right? You're like, no means no, health means health, fitness <laughs> means fitness. Yes! But in every way else, you're just so feminine. Like, you're soft, you know, the way that you move, the way that you talk, the way that you walk. Yes. It's so feminine. Mm. She's and gentle. Yeah. She takes care of people. Yes. She's like, baby. She's gentle. You girl. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We are not gentle. <laughs> we are not. I'm like, the most tall one. Oh my goodness. Not gentle. She really is. Guys, I got new <laughs> bruises every day. I don't even know why. Sorry, that's a sidetrack, right? Yeah. But just for shits and giggles. Because Hazy mentioned about clothes, right? So actually, just yesterday, I saw a meme. I found it very <laughs> funny. So I said... I mean, so I sent it to my friend. Basically, it says, Who the fuck raised me to believe that I need a new outfit for every event? Okay? My friend replied and said, You have outfits for events that you're not even going for. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's true. true. That's very true, true yeah. actually. She has shoes that she's never even worn. Y'all don't, man? I actually don't. I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I better shut up. Yeah, I mean... Redefining femininity is on your own terms. Right? It's not like a playbook you have to follow. It's not like I have to be this or that. You can be feminine in any own way. Even as a guy, right? You can let your feminine side show. A softer side show mm -hmm. where you need a bit of taken care of. Aww. Like where you are a bit more emotional. It's okay. Yeah. Girls yeah. appreciate it, okay? Girlfriends yes! actually appreciate that. Like, oh, you also want me to sayang you. It's cute. Because girls it's just want to communicate. But yes. guys are so different in front of their friends and in front of you. They're so different. It's, like, it's so oh, adorable, It's like it? two different people. Oh, you mm -hmm. are right. <laughs> 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 we asked Brown to come out. No, okay. It's true. Like in front of their friends, they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, strong, strong. Then with you, they're like, I'm a baby. <laughs> yeah, and then like the way they speak, suddenly their, their pitch just gets higher. It's different. Hi. Hi. And I think everybody can agree. Mm -hmm. Guys are the biggest babies when they're sick. Aww. Oh, they are. They are. They need the most TLC and love and care. Or like, That's so cute. If they've though. had a bad day. Mm -hmm. anyway. Okay, we like that. I'm just saying we yeah. like that. Just as much as guys appreciate the masculine side of girls, mm. girls can also appreciate the feminine side of guys. Exactly. So yeah. it's okay to be soft at times. And cute. Mm -hmm. Correct. Can like cry, it. can show emotions. Yeah. Set, say set lah. <laughs> then you get a teddy bear hug. So nice, correct? Aww. Aww. I will be the big spoon. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. So question, right? Uh -huh. In a guy, yeah. that they do, or a quality in them, whatever it is, that gets you. You know gets what I mean? Gets me in a bad way? In no, a no, good no, no. Way. In a good way. Like something that just gets you. I get so weak in the okay. knees. <laughs> For me, Okay. It's easy. The first thing I look out for in a guy is how disciplined or driven he is. I've oh, always been saying this, so but this, this is why she's wholesome. You understand, yeah, not? Yeah. But this quality in the guy has never changed for me. It is a must-have in all the guys that I date. But oh. what if because he has that quality, he prioritizes work over you? She will not probably, for me, but she will probably prioritize work over. Hey, don't like that. <laughs> no, I don't think so, lah. She balances very well. She does. Actually, I actually like to achieve a balance between love and work. It's all about you know, learning about each other and compromising. Mm. You can't expect at the start everything is perfect. Right. But you slowly start to work towards it. Yeah, I used to have a relationship. This guy, he's very driven, very disciplined, but he just placed more emphasis on work and less emphasis on me. And eventually, mm. we just didn't work out. Mm. Because no time, no attention spent. How do you make a relationship work, right? Mm. Yeah, so that's for me. Discipline, driven. For me, it's being a gentleman. Oh. Most of the guys I've dated <laughs> yes. have been... That's why I look out for. Opening of a door. Yes, she fell in love in school when the guy held the door open. Yeah, I did. Okay? <laughs> he held the door open and I was like, what a gentleman, I love you. <laughs> Holding the door open yeah. or even just holding my bags, offering to help me, offering yeah. to pick up something from me. It was just taking, you know, be, just being a man. Picking up shopping bags is so cute. Like, some men might find that, hey, you don't treat me as a slave. Yeah. No, I really had oh, a, really? A, a male friend think that. Like, oh. he does not like to hold bags for his girlfriend because he feels like he's being treated like a slave. Oh. That still baffles me to this day. But I wouldn't ask though. I wouldn't say like, can you hold this for me? I wouldn't like, Unless it's like this. really heavy. Then you'll be like, can you help me lah? Yeah, but, but usually, you know, they, they offer like, oh, yeah. can I hold that for you? Then I'll be like, no, it's okay. Yeah. And they'll be like, okay. no, then he would just grab it from me. Oh, oh that's sexy. Oh. That is sexy, yeah. Mm. yeah. What about you? What traits in the man? What gets you weak in the knees? I can hardly sleep. Yeah. Attention to detail. 
Oh. Like small things, mm-hmm. very minute things, right? That I feel like people always overlook. That shows like thoughtfulness that gets me. Like, let's say I show you something on my phone and then you just see like, oh, my battery low, then you just charge it. Oh, oh that's so cute. Like that. Mm, or yeah. like, oh. let's say I'm doing my makeup in the car. Okay. It's at a traffic light. I mean, we're all professionals at doing makeup yes. in the car. And then you move off and you're like, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you that we're moving off. Oh. It's like, I'm actually fine, but... Thank you for the thought. The yes. fact that you said that. Yes. Because people memories. overlook these things mm-hmm. all the time. Oh. So whose car were you doing makeup in? Yeah. Yops. Did you ever say that, Jimmy? No, I never no. ever said that. Oh. If I drive off your eyeliner, will be here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't do eyeliner and brows in the car. Oh, interesting. Ever. Well... <laughs> You know what? I think we went off tangent a little bit, but this was a fun conversation. Yeah. I think it was cute. Hopefully, any guys listening to this show a bit more of your feminine side, mm-hmm. your cute side. And to girls, it's okay to make the first move. Yeah, don't yeah. be afraid. Sometimes it gets you where you want to be. Hey. Wow, hey. correct. You miss 100% of the shots that you, you don't, don't take. take. Ah, That's You right. want something, you go for it. Yes. Yeah. Because you if you it. don't try, the answer will always be no. Mm-hmm. Hey. Wow. Motivation. Wow. Yeah. Also, recently, a male yeah. friend told me he has this theory. We found it extremely insane. Somebody out there, please go and try. Okay, basically he says, right? Let's say you're at a restaurant. You're okay. above your friends, whatever it is. Wherever you are, a cafe, whatever. You see a guy across the room that you like. He says it works 100% of the time. Oh, whoa, 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 Okay, whoa, whoa. okay, okay. My friend say, oh, nah, doesn't work. Don't look for me, understand? So he says... You make eye contact with this guy. Okay. And, um, sorry, a hair tie, somebody? Hair, hair tie? Sure, here you go. <laughs> I have a tiny one. Does this work? Can I try my best? Okay. Okay. He says that this will work 100% of the time. You're across the room, okay? Okay. Okay. The guy is there. Yes, you've there. been looking at each other. You know he's interested. You are interested. You want him to come over. He says that this will make him come over. You look straight. You cannot break eye contact. That's the trick. Okay. And, first of all, you must bite your own. Ah! And you cannot react on that. <laughs> and tired of her. <gasps> That's hard. And apparently, at some point, don't know how long, but he will come over. But if he never come, I keep tying. <laughs> <laughs> you take it out and then you tie again. You take it out and you tie it again. I don't know, I've never tried it. Can we put this to the test? Can somebody try, please, please and please, let us know? Please. Why don't you guys try it? He says success rate 100%. Oh my oh god. My god. Okay, try it and if it works, okay, drop us a DM oh my God. on Please Instagram. Let us know, let us okay, know. <laughs> yeah, our handle is at isclarity.co. Correct, and you can listen to us on me, listen, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Don't forget to turn on the notifications. And if you want to watch Azura tie her hair, make sure you watch this on YouTube. Honestly, that made me feel something. Sorry, was that <laughs> sexy enough? Should I do it again? It yes. was quite sexy, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, it was. Bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Should we try it? Try it. We're going to a party tomorrow night, right? Okay, we try. Okay, tomorrow night we try. The party is a bit dark, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think they can see you tying up your hair. But try it. Yes, but the trick is, while you're tying, as awkward as it is, cannot break eye contact. Must look at the person. I think I'll start laughing. Yeah, man. I'll start giggling. (laughs) (laughs) I can't take myself seriously. I know.